QuickClick is a hosted shopping cart solution and is a feature built into every full Gateway account. You can use the button generator to create links or buttons that you can put on almost any website to allow your customers to make payments. To create a button, go to the button generator, and you're presented with three options. You can create a shopping cart button, a fixed price button, or a donation button. In short, a donation button is a button where the customer is telling you how much they are paying. The fixed price button is a button where when anyone clicks it, they will check out for this exact amount. And a shopping cart button is a more traditional checkout where a customer can buy multiple fixed price items all in one transaction. As an example, let's create a fixed price button. You're taken to a form where you can enter a few parameters for this button. The only two required fields are item description and item price. The item description is what the customer will see that they're paying for, and the item price is how much that item costs. When entering the item price, remember to include the cents as well. Beyond these two items, everything else is optional. The shopping cart language can be English or Spanish, and the finished URL is where you can put a website of your choosing where the customer can click at the end of their transaction once we've already shown them their receipt to go back to whatever website you want them to go to. You could use this to do a thank you page or to take them back to your home page. You don't have to fill it out, but if you do, we'll show this continue link on the final receipt page. As a note on the finish URL, make sure that you include the HTTPS or HTTP colon slash slash of your website URL. If you include just the domain, it will not succeed. You have to include the HTTP as well. Finally down here is key verification. This is a way for us to secure the button to make sure that nobody edits the code and pays a different amount than you have set up at the top. So we're going to leave that as the default card key. Hit create button. And this spits out two things. It gives you the button code, and this is fully formatted HTML that you can copy and paste onto your website, and it will display a button that says buy now. Alternatively, if you don't want to use the button code, we also give you a link alternative, and this accomplishes the same thing. However, it's just a URL that is generated for these rules that you set up. When a customer clicks this link, they'll be taken to a checkout page to pay for the amount that you set. You do not have to use both of these, you just have to pick which one works for your business model. The settings for the other button types are very similar. A donation button does not have a price as the customer will be telling you how much they're paying, so you just have to enter an item description. The shopping cart button is very similar as you need to enter an item description as well as the item price, but there's also an item ID. You need to give the item an ID. This can be a number or characters. As you can see on the shopping cart button, there are also multiple URLs. So because this is a shopping cart situation, in the code generated for this, it will generate an add to cart button, not a checkout button. So when someone clicks the button generated by a shopping cart button, they'll be taken to their cart where they can either complete their payment or they can go back to shop for more. All of these are optional, but if you enter a cancel URL, this will allow the customer to cancel their order at any point and clear out their shopping cart. The continue URL will put a link on the shopping cart page where the customer can go back to continue shopping. And the finish URL is the same as with the fixed price or the donation. It's once the transaction is completed and they've made their payment, they can continue back to whatever website you would like. Note that you can also include shipping on shopping cart buttons. The shipping amount is a per unit shipping. So if you set $5 as your shipping cost and the customer buys four items, they'll pay $20 in total shipping. Product options can be expanded, and this gives you options to create different settings for your items. So let's say I'm selling t-shirts. I'm selling one t-shirt, and it's going to be the same price no matter what one you're buying. However, I have different sizes, and I want someone to be able to choose between different sizes. I can give an option name, set it as a drop-down menu or a text field, and create some options if it's a drop-down. In this case, I sell the shirt in small, medium, and large sizes. I can also set other ones, such as one for color. I can also do drop-down. And I can even do a third option. I'll do one with a custom message. And this one, I'll just do a text field. Here's an example checkout page based on the default settings and using that fixed price button that we created earlier. Once the customer's filled out their information, they hit continue. This is where they'll see the order description and the order amount. They can fill out their card information and hit complete order. This is the receipt page that we show, including all their billing, shipping, order information, as well as their payment information. This continue link shows up because I used a finish URL, and when I click it, I'm taken back to the website entered. QuickClick also has a bunch of options that you can change to customize the experience to your liking. Two of the most common sections are look and feel and customer information. We'll go to look and feel first. This is where you can create a new profile to change how the checkout page looks. We'll hit add profile. And here I need to give it a name. 
I can change the colors of the text, errors, highlights, shading, or the background of the page. And then I can do even more customization with the page headers and page footer sections. This will change what displays above and below the checkout form. The header URL and footer URL is where you can paste a link to any remote file that you want us to load above or below the checkout page. The most common use for this is to load your company logo. To do that, you just need a link to your company's logo. You can paste it in the header URL, and this will load that image centered above the checkout form. Meanwhile, the header text and footer text are where you can enter fully formatted HTML or just plain text that will display above or below the checkout form as well. If you have a web designer, they can use these fields to further customize the look and feel of your quick click checkout. The other section you'll likely want to look at is customer information. And this is where you customize what fields you want us to ask the customer to fill out. You can set all these fields to required, optional, or hidden. It's totally up to you. When you're done, hit save. Payment methods is where you can choose whether you want your customers to be able to pay with credit card or electronic check. Security is where you can set two settings. This is where you can set whether the security key is required to validate form data. There are very few situations where you want to turn this off, so we recommend all merchants keep this on. The other option is to enable CAPTCHA verification. Again, this is on by default, and this helps ensure that only people are checking out on your website, not bots. Tax is available for shopping cart buttons, and this lets you set specific tax rates for people checking out from certain states or Canadian provinces. Shipping options also only work for shopping cart buttons, but they allow you to set two different things for shipping. The first are thresholds, where you can set if a transaction is over a certain amount, this is what I want the US domestic rate to be, and this is what I want the international rate to be. In this example that I have here, any transaction over $0 will be $10 for domestic shipping or $15 for international. If it's over $50, it'll be $5 and $10. And if the customer is buying more than $100 in this transaction, it'll be free shipping. These thresholds and values can be whatever I would like for my business model. At the bottom of the page, we have shipping types as well. If you want to offer multiple types of shipping, you can do this. Simply enable the shipping options you would like, and then choose how much you want to markup. So I'll do 0% markup on ground, 10% markup on three day select, and next day shipping, I'll do a 40% markup. When I save, these are active. So as an example, using this setup, if a customer is checking out for $60, that puts them above the $50 threshold, but below 100, so this will be their shipping. It's $5 for domestic and $10 for international. Let's say this is an international order. So $10 shipping. Then if the customer, when they're checking out, selects next day air, that will add 40% to that $10 amount, so their shipping will be $14. The final setting is for surcharging and convenience fees. This will only work if you have surcharging turned on in your gateway account. This account does, and you can set the default surcharge type. So I have no surcharge right now, so whatever the customer checks out for, they'll pay. However, I can change it to my fixed or percentage prices and hit save. The convenience fee slash surcharging configuration applies to all button types, shopping cart, fixed price, and donation. Now whatever I have set up in my settings for the entire gateway will be used as the percentage. As two final notes about QuickClick, any settings changes you make, such as your look and feel settings, your customer information, all of these, anything you change here will apply to all buttons you have created in the past, so you don't have to regenerate buttons after you change some of these settings. Additionally, when you generate this code, we don't save it to your account for later. The code will always work if you use it, but we don't save it to your gateway for you to retrieve at a later date. Therefore, when you generate these buttons, you're going to want to save them to your local computer or to wherever you will be able to keep track of them so you can use them in the future.